we'll be learning about the data types in Java. So what are the data types? Data type specifies the different sizes and values that can be stored in the variable. So in the previous video, we have learned about the variables. So we can here data types is nothing but it declares the which type of the data it's going to store inside the memory. Okay, so here you can see the chart of the different types of data types are there. You can pause the video and you can look into this. I'll be teaching you each, every, each and every type, how, what type of the data it, it going to store. Okay, so let, moving next, it, here, is, is, here is a chart you can see. So in the first column, the name of the data type is there in the default value means if you don't assign the value to the data type, what value it going to store inside it by default. Okay. And here's the default size that how may, how much memory it will consume if you declare that type of the data type inside your code. Okay, so let's suppose if I declare an integer data integer variable of data type. So the default size it, it will hold is of four bytes. Okay, so enough talking about the data types. We'll see in detail in the code in this video. Okay, so let's just talk about the keywords. Keywords in Java are also known as reserve words. Okay, the keywords are particular words that act as a key to the code. Th these are the nothing but the predefined words by Java so that you cannot be used as a variable or object name or a class name. Okay, so there are basically uh, I think I guess 48 48 keywords rewards reserve keywords are there in Java which you cannot use uh, either as a variable name object name or the class name I will show in the show you in the code part so enough talking about the theoretical part let's code it I will jump into my IDE IntelliJ idea okay stick till the end I will be announcing some new announcement is there for you guys so that you can learn more efficiently in this whole series okay so and i don't want any tip come here click on right click on the src click on new and the new java class so today we are learning data types so i will give this file name as data types okay Okay, so come inside this, declare your main class, main method, sorry. And inside main method, so let's go and see each data types one by one. Okay, so first of all, we'll, we'll be talking about the Boolean data type. Okay, so Boolean data type is that used to store only two values. Let me show you. Okay, so for example, if I declare Boolean first of all let me increase the font size I don't know how to increase it okay let it be I guess you guys are getting what I'm telling trying to tell you okay boolean 1 is equal to false okay okay and I will do system.out.println and print 1 okay so if I click here run see guys what will happen let me hide this project okay so you can see false get printed on the console okay so as you can see I have declared one bo boolean data type one and variable name is one and I have assigned it the value to be false okay so if I write here true and again I click on the run see it will give me true okay and if I write anything else one two see IntelliJ idea is throwing some error let's check it so here it was telling that the one variable that I have, that I have declared is a type of boolean and we, I was I I'm trying to store the integer value inside it so that can cannot be happen okay so now I will show you if I declare this one boolean one and I'm trying to print the one okay so here it again I get error variable one might not be have initialized so I have to initialize it whether as false okay or true it's up to you but remember it will going to hold only one two types okay either false or either true okay so next data type is a short data type 
So short data type is a 16 bit assigned to complement integer and its value lies in between the minus 32768 to 32767 okay that's the theoretical part i will show you the implementation right away okay short s is equal to let me assign it the value let's suppose 10000 i guess it is right okay and i will declare another short variable name is r okay and i will assign it the value of minus 5000 okay and i will simply print s plus r okay and if i click run see the values are going to um, print it on the console so short is the data type which holds these values okay so next is float next come float let me comment this out first yeah, yeah. let's go so float is nothing but that uh, when you when you are trying to store the data which is in the point or decimal okay so what I'm trying to tell, let me give you with the example float f1 is equal to 234.50. Okay. Achha, I guess wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Float f1 and f. Okay. And if I try to print now float f1 okay and if i try to click on run here the float value is 2.5 is going to print it okay so you have to write f while you that you are storing the float values inside a float variable okay so this is this is for float and now integer comes okay integer is simple straightforward int a is equal to you can assign any value okay let's suppose 250 okay and inside this i will print the variable name a and if i click run now here you can see 250 get printed on this console okay so these are the data types and yet more to come we will learn all those data types when we are going to learn all those data structures parts okay so let me get back to the keyword and the keywords are nothing but the reserve words you cannot use that words uh, to declare any variable name object name and class name inside your uh, code okay so enough talking so in upcoming videos we are going to see one exercise is coming for you guys i expect you guys to answer those exercise and we will be seeing solution for those exercise questions in the upcoming videos okay so the announcement is that I have created one uh, repository for you guys and I will be uploading all those PDF resources that I have. These are the notes. I will be up uploading all those notes inside that repository and the code part, this part. I will be uploading all these codes in as a, as a file inside this repository. You can You guys can access this repository and download the code as well as the PDF part and the link to the repository will be provided in the video description you can access and get the help from it so thank you guys for watching this video i'll see you in the next one thank you